A newsletter is one of the easiest, low-cost ways to reach customers, colleagues, or connect with your family. InDesign allows you to create elegant newsletters in a flash. I'm going to start by selecting this frame. And this frame I actually drew with InDesign's pen tool to silhouette the clock tower I'm going to bring in. I'll choose File Place, but I'm more likely to hit Command D to drop in picture or drop in text or Control D on Windows. I'll go to my Images folder and I'll place the clock tower TIFF. I can then go to my control panel across the top of the screen and hit Center Content. Or if your resolution isn't high enough, you could choose Object, Fitting, and Center Content. I'm going to click away to deselect, and now I'm ready to place text. InDesign doesn't force you to build a text frame or container before you place. If you're pulling in text, it will build a text frame for you automatically. So I'll hit Command D or Control D to drop in picture or drop in text. I'll go to my Assets folder and Text Files, and I'll start with the Events Grots text. Now, if I were to click at these guides once quickly, this is not a column. I built this newsletter template with a wider left margin and really two main columns on the cover page. So I'll undo that because you may have also noticed I had a little red plus sign in the lower right corner that indicates there was more text there that didn't fit on this first page. So I'm going to hold down a key which triggers semi auto flow. The Alt key or Option key as I hit it in InDesign shows me a dotted bent arrow. This means that I can hold down Alt or Option and click and drag along the guides that I created in this template. And when I let go, it poured in all the text and my cursor is still loaded ready to place the rest of the text. So I'll hit Pages and double click on page 3. I'll then hold down Alt or Option again and this page has three columns. So I could simply start at my guides with Alt or Option held down and click once. Still holding down Alt or Option I clicked again and I let go of it now because I know this is the last column that I need. My last click poured in the remainder of the text. I still see this overflow or overset text icon, but I know I still need to apply styles, so I'm going to let it go and pour in the rest of my text, then apply styles. I'll double click back on the cover, page 1, and I'll hit Command D or Control D or File Place to bring in more text. For this text, I'll choose Grotz. Hit Open and this time, I'm going to hold down what I call the Shift Click Trick. The Shift key, if I hold it down, shows me a bent solid arrow. Shift clicking in InDesign triggers auto flow. When I hold down Shift and click once, it poured the text into this column, this column, if I double click on page 2, it filled all the columns on page 2 and even continued on page 3 until the entire story was placed. I'm now ready to format my text, so I've double clicked on page 1. And something else I set up for you. In paragraph styles, the body style was already built and selected. So if I pour in generic text, it knows to come in in the body style. I'm going to double click to get inside this text box and apply Heading 1 with one quick click. I'll click on the Schlossberg Mountain and click on Heading 2. If a style is being applied to only one line, there's no need to highlight. And one of my favorite tools, the eyedropper tool, will let me suck up a style or load the eyedropper and reuse it over and over again. So right now the eyedropper is right and white on the tip. 
if I get the tip over Schlossberg Mountain and click once, it flips to the left and the end is black, indicating it's loaded. When I see the tip of the eyedropper get the eye beam or your text cursor, it's safe to click once. And now I'm applying my Heading 2 styles. I'll hit Alt Page Down, Alt Page Down or Option Page Down, Pages Down and keeps my spread centered. And I've almost finished. Now I show this on purpose. I'll go to View, Fit Spread and Window. I was moving rather quickly and I wasn't paying attention to my eyedropper cursor. So if I undo, what happened was I didn't see the eye beam and I clicked once, so it changed the entire fill color of the text box to black. If I undo again and look for the eye beam, if I get the tip of the cursor directly on text, it will now apply without changing the box color. What actually happened in this page is this box is covering up the first one that I made, so it has to be on actual characters on the topmost box to fill. So it's important that you see that this can happen. What I'll do now is switch to my selection tool and I'm going to delete this box. When I hit delete, now as I click, here is a text frame for advertisement text. Here is the bottom text frame. And if I double click to get back on special events, go to my eyedropper tool, click once to load it, this serenata and this festival can now be formatted with heading 2 because there aren't two text boxes overlapping one another. And even though I deleted this extra text that was flowing onto page 3, it's okay. I don't actually need that extra text flowing. If I go to my type tool, I can highlight these lines and this should actually be a bulleted list. So I built a style called bullets and with one click, everything fits. And I'll finish this off by applying Heading one here, clicking on Art, heading one here. And finally, I have three images I'd like to place, so I'll click on Paragraph Styles to get it out of the way. I'll hit Command D or Control D to drop in picture or drop in text. I'll go to Chapter 2, Into Images, and the images that I want are the elevator, the Graz Tiff, and the birdcage. I'm holding down Command or Control to select non-adjacent or non-touching items. I'll click Open and the birdcage I'd like down here. So if I miss this round box I'd like it to go into, I'll undo and aim for the dead center. Here I could see a square on the paintbrush icon, which means it would make a new frame. Here, it looks like parentheses, meaning it will go into the existing frame. Again, square means new frame. Parentheses mean go in the existing frame. And lastly, square, then parentheses. And this newsletter is mostly ready to go. All you need to do is finish it up with the add text, the back page, and a table of contents here that InDesign can automatically generate for you. So this is your tour of how to quickly pour in text, place images, and whip up a newsletter for either personal or professional use.